Hello everyone. Today I'm going to set up an instance on my Amazon server. So here you just log into your Amazon console. You go over to EC2. So today we're going to install a WordPress machine. So launch my instance. I'm going to go into the Amazon Marketplace, type in WordPress, and here I'm going to choose this Bitnami WordPress. So I'm going to click simply select it, and then next you'll have some options here of which type of how big of a build you want. But it, it auto picks the T2 micro server. So it's eligible for the free. Um, so down here, I'm just going to configure my instances. And basically, just leave all this the same until we get to the end. Where this is where I got hung up for the last two days. So, so this part here, this SSH, what we need to do here is we need to open it up either to anywhere or to my IP. So I've been able to get it to work with anywhere, but I think maybe it just it might be a little bit um, uh, unsecure. But again, I'm not I'm not 100% sure. Um, so let's just leave it at that because I've been able to get this to work. Um, so then we just review and we launch it. And then you just so here's your review your details of it. So it all looks good. And then so here's where you create your key pair. So basically what we're going to do is you're going to create a new key pair. And then we're going to call this one WP6. WP6. We're going to download it and we'll just download the key pair. So then basically what I do is I just hit the launch the instance. And then I go down over here, go to the folder that's got the key pair in it, click the key pair, and then I bring it into my C drive, I bring it in sort of into the user, the user area, that's where I've been putting them anyways. So here now I can remember where it is, it's down here, WP6. So then what I do is I just go back over to my instance and it's loading. Um, and then if you scroll down, See the instance here. I've got another one running from before. And it's just set up. So you can see this top one, it always sort of populates it to the top. So it's in a hierarchy of uh, chronological order from newest to oldest. And then basically, you just click on that. And this will show you your public DNS. So if you take your public DNS, you just copy this. So then basically what you also need to do is you also need to, while we're waiting for this, you also need to go to PuTTY. So you just go to the PuTTY terminal download site. So you can download the PuTTY software. And basically I've downloaded the this MSI version, Windows 64. And then the other one you need is you need the key generation file, which is down over here, PuTTY keygen64. So then you just download these two. Basically, what you need to do is you need to use the PuTTY keygen, which is this file here. You need to turn this PEM file into a PEK file, PKE. So that's what you need these two pieces of software for. Um, this is the keygen to translate this into a format that the PuTTY software can read. This PuTTY software can read, and then you can use it. As, then you can use the terminal to log into your server that we're creating. But I'll go through that in a second here. Okay, so there's our websites. That's our WordPress. 
So now what we do is we click on this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. This is our public domain, public IP address. I'm just going to put that there. I'm just going to remember that I called it WP Fish. And then what I also copy here is I go into here, actions, and then I go to here, computer, sorry, and get the system log. This also usually takes a second to load as well. Sometimes it's quick, sometimes it's up. But it's still not loading there. You don't really have to have it now, but I'm just trying. I'm trying to do is I'm trying to go in. Here is where they store the password for you for the first time, so you can use this one time. So basically, I'm just going to go in here, and copy the password out, and stick it onto my Word document. Let's do that again. Okay, so that's not a problem. So let's go over here to the PuTTY. So let's just say I've just we've just downloaded the PuTTY 64-bit and we've downloaded the, the PuTTY gen. So then we just launch them. So I'm just gonna go into the PuTTY gen key here. Basically, I'm gonna go to conversions, import the key that I just made and downloaded, which is this key there. So I'm gonna Navigate over to where I have it stored. So basically, I'm just going to import this here. And you can put in a password here if you want. Um, I didn't have much luck when I put the password in. I kept getting stuck. Um, I basically couldn't log on to my server when I filled this in. I'm sure. I'm sure it'll work. It just some more it takes a little more to uh, get it to work. Um, but if you put it in here. Um, it'll make everything more secure, make this key gen even more secure. So, so then here I'm going to see that there's got three, you have three different selections here. Um, we're just going to turn it on for this SSH. And we're going to save the private. There you go. I'm sure I don't want a password. To name it the same thing. This is important that you name it the same as your other file. So it's going to end in a PPK file here. So that's the ending uh, prefix for it. So there it's done. So it's already finished it. So that's done. Go back over here to our console. And I just want to make sure we get the password. The log system. Then if you scroll down here, you get the dictionary. And for some reason, you have, to, you have to type this in. I'm not too sure why, but that's the way it works. Um, it's MP X seven. So that's like I said, you get one chance to, to copy this. The next time you open this log, it's not going to be there. So just, just the one more thing what I do here is just when I get stuck on last time is that I was trying to put in the, the username for a Linux um, server in my, uh, in my PuTTY software. I was using uh, a Linux, which is the EC2 um, dash user at and that's the wrong password that I found out after two days looking trying to figure out what was wrong um, so basically we've got a Ubuntu server here so basically the user in PuTTY to log into your terminal is Ubuntu okay that looks good um, so then what we can do here if we want to just try to log into our log into our our instance here. Basically, we just put in 
So now basically what we want to do is because if we're looking at our page here, we still have this Bitnami thing happening here, this little icon. So we want to try to get rid of that. And the way we're going to get rid of that is to use the PuTTY uh, terminal. So we're here, I'm going to log into PuTTY. Um, and our host name here is on our server console. So basically plug this in here. It's our public DNS. And that's all set there. Um, and then the data, the username here in Vietnam, sorry, Ubuntu. See Ubuntu there. And then here for the SSH, scroll down this and go into the off section. And here is where we want to put our, our key. Basically, it's where I stored it before, and it's, it's the PKK file, which is this one here, 6, feels good. And then uh, someone else showed this little feature where you can change the terminal color so it's a little bit easier to read. System. And then here it's saying if you just want to log the key and the cache, which is correct. And there we go, we're logged in. So good. Um, and then what we want to do here is we want to try to get rid of that little icon that's on the corner of our page, which is down here. So um, if you click on it, it actually brings you up to the page how to actually get rid of it. See, here's the code to actually stick into your PuTTY terminal to get rid of that. Uh, so here it is. Here, and you basically have to copy this. I don't think you can just copy it, cut and paste it in into your terminal. Let's see, I think you actually just have to type it in. So and the spaces are all important, which I've learned. didn't work. Um, so this is just a matter of just getting the syntax correct. Um, oh, it says app's name. That's why it's in here. You put in WordPress. And then it's B N C one big space hash hash disable underscore banner space one. So now that, that, that worked. Okay. So we go back over here to the blog. You can see it down here. And then what we're going to do is refresh that. And there, the, the banner is gone. So that's good. Um, and then again, 
Obviously, you can go back over here to your dashboard and you can load your themes in and everything like that. So that's basically it. That's basically all I know for this, uh, how to launch an instance in EC2. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks, everybody. And uh, if, if you have any other tips or tricks, you can let me know as well. I'm just, I'm sort of new at this, but that's how far I've gotten in the last two days. <laughs>